Hello everybody, uh, I am back to continue my uh, my uh, progress on my precision landing scripts. So the last video I made was one to uh, work on the actual precision landing portion. However, um, I didn't have a deorbit uh, script, so I'm going to be talking about the one that I created today. It's still a work in progress, but so far what I have is, is pretty good. Um, just needs to... Uh, I'm going to change to a uh, more optimized version later on, but for now it's... it's uh, uh, so, the way that it works is it takes a circular orbit uh, around a body that's uh, equatorial, so it's along the equator, um, and then it creates a maneuver node to put the periapsis of the ship, or, or the periapsis of the new orbit, at a designated altitude, so in this case I chose 20 kilometers, and then it will also um, put it put the periapsis so that whenever the ship hits the periapsis after the burn, it will fly directly over the target. Um, so this is needed because the previous one I had to manually do the the, the orbit burn, and I want to make an automated process that's also very accurate. So if I'm going directly over the target I don't need to burn as much to change my course I just need to essentially just slow down at that point um, so with that in mind I'm going to show you some of the code here and I'll walk through I'll walk through the whole code just uh, just the different functions that I have and what they're used for uh, so the first one here is uh, let's see, we'll, we'll talk about what what the inputs are right so you just need a target uh, lat long, which is 5, 120, and then a periapsis, which is 20 kilometers, uh, or 20,000 meters. Um, and then the way that it works is at first it sets a test time, so it just takes 30 seconds, um, and then it will. that's the place where it will create a node, right? Then the second thing it does is it creates a landing vector, uh, and that's done using this function here. Um, landing the landing vector is essentially the orbit at that point in time uh, I'm sorry the velocity vector at that point in time for the landing deorbit burn um, so it uses angle rotate here um, it, or sorry I should say it uses angle axis to rotate the the velocity vector by its desired value in this case it's um, the desired inclination uh, will be 5 because that's what our target latitude is, right? We want the periapsis to be uh, right over the target, which means that it has to have the same inclination as the latitude. So how would work if you wanted to run the... Uh, if you wanted to, to end up at your periapsis at the target. Um, the second thing it needs is... is um, um, or, or sorry, I should say that's what this first angle rotate, angle rotate ink, that's what it's doing to the velocity vector. Uh, and this velocity vector is at that maneuver time, which in this case is our test 30 seconds. Um, so that's what that's what I'll do there. The second one's a little bit harder to, to explain, but what it does is it, it using your landing periapsis, uh, it runs this script here. Um, and this script is very simple, just calculation. Uh, so it turns out that if you um, want to, if you are in a circular orbit and you rotate the velocity vector ra radially, right? So I guess along the normal, um, so let me create a maneuver node here. So along this purple line, so if you rotate it uh, either positive or negative, um, and you maintain the magnitude of, of the velocity vector, so you don't change the speed, what you do is you create uh, you'll create um, an orbit that has the same semi-major axis, and it has the same orbital ener or specific orbital energy. Uh, these these are two very important factors that lead to this this uh, derivation here, and I'll walk you through it. I, I wrote it down here. Sorry if it's green. I wanted to leave it in the comments here so it's easier to to read for or to you wanted to look at it, right? So. Um, these right here are all the definitions of, of all the values that I'll be using. So mu, uh, h, um, e, 
Uh, H is the angular momentum. Uh, mu is the gravitational parameter, uh, so on and so forth. The, the, these should be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and the equation that I use is this, this equation here. So the semi-major axis is equal to P, uh, which is the angular momentum squared divided by the gravitational parameter of the body, divided by, uh, and all that divided by one minus the eccentricity. Right, so uh, the neat thing is that we have the periapsis, that's our input. The semi-major axis is a constant. Uh, thus, we're able to determine the new uh, apoapsis, right? Because A is constant and RP is chosen. Uh, and then with the new apoapsis, we can get the new eccentricity of the the, the orbit, of the d-orbit, um, I should say. The d-orbit orbit. orbit. Is that, that's confusing. But So now we have E and we have um, A and we just need to find uh, H, right? Because the new new h is determined by the perpendicular distance or i'm sorry the perpendicular velocity times the the radius so that's the part that we don't know right because if we um if we change the velocity vector from essentially like pointing you know rotating it like this uh the new uh, the new why won't it let me probably because it's old if we rotate the velocity vector like this, this isn't a perfect example, but if you rotate the velocity vector like this, um, you see how this new at this point you now have an angle between the the uh, you know perfect circular orbit versus the 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 new orbit. So we're trying to find that angle because that's how much we want to rotate the uh, the orbit. Uh, so going back to the derivation. Um, and, and the reason I say that is, uh, is because within that angle, we can find the perpendicular velocity, uh, which is here. And then with the perpendicular velocity, doing some backwards algebra, you can determine this alpha angle, which is the angle that you need to rotate it to get the desired periapsis. So um, uh, again, th this is a simple algebra. I, uh, it, it, as far as I know, it's correct. It, it's giving me correct results. So. Uh, if someone sees something wrong, please let me know. But um, I don't really want to go into derivation because it's, I guess, confusing with all the different terms and blah, blah, blah. But it's here if you want to check it out. So anyway, uh, given a desired periapsis, the, um, uh, you input that into this, this equation or this function, and you get this angle that you need to rotate it by. And then this goes into goes into here. So first thing you do is rotate it to have a new inclination. So that would be something like something like this. Rotate it like that. Um, and then the next thing you do is then either then you rotate it like this. So you see how we have a new inclination and then the periapsis is going to be right here. Um, and then the other cool function that I create or I mean, I think it's cool. But the other function that I created uh, was this vector to node. So one thing that I that I realized is that um, these these maneuver nodes, you see how they're they're pointed like this. Um, even though this this new orbit is rotated, these do not change, right? Because they're relative to the velocity vector at that point in time. They're not relative to the new velocity. That was a little bit confusing for me because I always thought like well, if you just burn normally, you're not going to be changing. I mean, technically, you'd just be rotating the velocity vector. You wouldn't be changing. But see, um, the the velocity actually changes here. New one. So if I do this, periapsis is still 100 because that's where we did it. But now it's 181, which means the velocity has changed. So you actually have to like reduce this speed here in order to get like, you know, in order, if you just want to change the inclination, you need to do a combination of normal and retrograde in this orientation, right? So that's what this script here is for. It takes the, the desired velocity vector at a certain point in time, so essentially a certain point on the orbit, uh, and uh, then creates a burn vector. So 
So this burn vector is just your desired vector minus your current or your velocity vector at that point in time and then determines the normal prograde and radial components at at the point in time and then creates a node and then adds a node um, and that's that's what that script does and then this ETA uh, I'll get to in a second so um, that's what that's what this is doing here this is where we were before um, and then once you once it runs it um, or, I'm sorry this this right here is is just finding that new angular or, or velocity vector and then spitting that out and then with this one we can convert it into a node uh, and then it prints it out um, and there we go so now we have a node at, at time equals 30 seconds uh, the landing vector that we decided was based on the, the inputs of target lat and the um, landing periapsis and the time test right however we don't know if it's gonna we need it at exactly 30 seconds right so if we create a node here and we did you know again this is just an example so if we did something like this see that um, suppose that this is correct and this angle is correct we now have a, a periapsis that hits here well I know for a fact from running this I also wanted to do it in the light that the the target we're trying to reach is latitude uh, 5 longitude 120 which is over here so if you just rotate it eventually it'll reach the the correct angle right and uh, this and the way you determine at what time you need to put this uh, is pretty simple because your ship is rotating a certain p uh, period and the moon or mun is rotating at a certain period so if you uh, determine those frequencies and subtract them from one another you get the relative rotation right it, it, and the ship is going to be much faster than than mun obviously but you still need that extra bit of accuracy so then once it runs that test that test node which is over here so it's like 30 seconds ahead it'll say you uh, once you get to this node you burn here your periapsis you're going to be you know at x longitude and then it finds the difference between the longitude of the target and your periapsis longitude. And then uh, does the does the math with the frequency to determine how much farther you need to extend this. And then it does that, and then it will put the the uh, periapsis exactly where um, you need it to be. So let me close this out, and I'll just run the code. It. Oh, wow. Oh. We have run out of line of sight embarrassing uh, so as soon as this turns green here on this boom there we go so now it's just wait uh, I have it set to wait until false so it's just waiting if you notice this white line represents the target uh, the periapsis is right here and they're offset but this is because the landing periapsis is going to rotate a little bit right because by the time I get to the burn and by the time I get to the periapsis the moon will rotate so um, let me close this out let me clear and then now this orbit should be perfect and we're going to test it out by running uh, the spot land this this script here I'm not going to go into too much detail I've already described in the previous video I will touch on one or two things that I've changed but um, the first thing it's going to do is run a execute burn, so it'll burn this, and then it'll uh, it'll fast forward or time warp until it's close to the periapsis, and then continue to run the script. Zoom in here to see what's going on. Right now it's warping to the burn location. Um, uh, I've already talked about the burn, uh, the execute burn thing, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but it does a very good job of getting accurate or to getting accurate to the burn I've actually improved it so now instead of getting close getting an accuracy of uh, 0.1 meters per second it does to point uh, zero one meters now you can see that it's changing its inclination um, and the perhaps is getting very very close getting close to turning off should turn off when it gets to point one. 
Boom. And now we're gonna we're gonna fast forward. And whenever it gets done, you should see how close it is to the landing position. Very apps. Very close. It's awesome. I love I love seeing how close it is. Um, again, again, this was all because I needed something that's more efficient, right? If I can if I can create a uh, an orbit that will get me to my target um, in the first place, like at least over the target, it saves a lot of fuel because you know down here I'm going to be going much faster than I would be up here in this orbit. Um, thus, like it, trying to turn this vector, right? You're going probably twice as fast, maybe faster. Uh, the cost to try and turn the vector to point towards the landing is going to be much higher than um, than if you did it up there. So it's just you know to save fuel and just to to be more precise. I, I have confidence that this could work. You know, just running from orbit and you know very very high altitude. Uh, but then again, you don't. I'd rather just get close to the target and then land. Uh, that way, I'm not putting a lot of strain on the script to you know test out extremities or anything like that. Uh, I'm going to just let this run until it hits the landing position. Uh, it's, it's pretty fun to watch. Um, uh, the things that I've changed, so I, I guess I could talk about that before it starts. Things that I change is the the hysteresis now checks for all the entire thrust vector, um, or I should say the throttle vector. So before it had a, had a weird bug that it would turn off because it was checking just part of it so now I just check the entire throttle vector so it works much better um, the other thing that I changed was the follow mode the the logic for that is now it's trying it's it's checking to make sure that the, if this velocity vector is uh, close to the landing vector right which means that if your velocity ve your surface velocity vector is going directly to the landing vector you're essentially falling or flying to, directly towards your your um, your target wh whatever that may be so this should you should see this follow mode uh, turn true whenever this angle gets below 15 degrees which is fairly close to vertical as this and boom follow mode is true now it's going to try and cancel out that that uh, difference between the two angles or two vectors uh, now we're going to just fall for a little bit. I'm going to speed this up. Uh, and uh, we're trying to make sure that we're, our, you know, our max speed doesn't reach past a certain amount. And you'll notice whenever the throttle kicks back on that the ship kind of points a little bit. And, and you can see the, the blue and the red are, are kind of shifting a little because you know, our, our velocity vector is changing since we're accelerating, so we're not going to continuously fall. Here it's reducing that error there. It's a little bit of overshoot, which is fine. And then the velocity, or the, thru the thrust, is going to be increasing the closer we get, trying to get as much, uh, as high percentage as we can to increase efficiency. Um, and then... Once we get to below 5 meters per second, it's going to switch on to touchdown mode, which just holds a steady velocity, or I should say steady speed. Boom. So it's trying to hit that 5 meters per second. And I didn't know beforehand that it was going to hit this rock, but I've learned that this rock is hollow. It's a fake news rock, so... Um, but yeah, so th this is a fairly bit more improved uh, as far as efficiency. I think th I haven't really touched much on the landing precision, so it's still I'm still pretty impressed at how close it is. Um, there's no bouncing this time because uh, maybe they changed some stuff or uh, these be these bigger legs helped a lot, so whatever that means. But you can see the landing vectors pretty much on the ship. Um, pretty confident in that. Uh, the only thing I wanted to touch on is, uh, here, I'm going to reload. And the only thing I wanted to touch on was is, um, to talk about this this orbit here and what I'm going to do to improve it. So right now, yeah, using this, you know, like these perfect conditions of it's a, it's in a perfect circular orbit, um, 
I'm just burning, I'm uh, keeping the magnitude of the speed constant. It's it's going to produce very very good analytical results, right? Uh, however, if if I have you know slight, um, if I do this manually, I, I I edited the ship into this orbit. If I do this manually, I won't get you know super precision. Precision, I can get pretty close, but my the other thing that I wanted to do is trying to reduce this apoapsis. It's really really high, and it seems a bit unnecessary. Right, I mean, like I, I could be reducing the speed here to improve efficiency. Uh, I could be, um, it, but that's pretty much it. I just need to reduce the speed. But then that that causes it to not be, you know, I can't solve it analytically anymore. I don't, I don't think. I don't, I don't, I haven't figured it out yet if there is. So what I wanted to do next was use that same process of starting with a a uh, mat or uh, uh, an or a a maneuver node that's 30 seconds away at least um, and then try and increment the time and the, the different um, solutions for the prograde normal and retrograde um, sorry the prograde the radial and the normal to try and match the, this condition of having the periapsis hit exactly where the target is uh, and to reduce the delta v needed as much as possible, right? Um, I think I could do that with like a gradient descent script or you know, a kill climbing or something like that. Um, unless there's really some you know, analytical solution that ex escapes me, but it'd be fun. I'll, I, whenever I get that done, I want to. Uh, uh, I'll make another video, and then um, I should be able to put something together for like a whole. A whole mission going from here to maybe Minmus and then back um, something like that it, it should be pretty cool all right uh, thanks a lot if you have any questions just leave the comments you can catch me on discord on the KOS uh, subreddit discord uh, if you have further questions and I'd be happy to talk about it thanks